What's up guys, welcome back to Fisher Hex. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and do a quick test fill on the 300 gallon tank using tap water. After that, we're gonna go ahead and aquascape it. And then at the end of the video, you guys will see what the tank looks like underneath T5 lighting. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now, when it comes to test filling all my systems, as I mentioned, tap water is really the only way that I like to go. I like to make sure that I can fill up the systems, double check for any leaks, make sure it's level completely, and then go ahead and drain the system down to maybe one or two inches, do my aquascaping dry, and then fill it up with either RODI water or tap water again. Now, I did go ahead and fill the system up with tap water originally and started the whole process after the rock was in there with salt and all that kind of stuff. And uh, some people like to start with RODI. I have no issues either way. Um, usually, if you have a dirty, dry rock and you haven't cured that, and then you go ahead and start with um, tap water and then you add some light over your tank, that's when you start having issues. But if you have cured rock, you can go ahead and add light with just tap water and you shouldn't have any problems. As you guys can see, the sump is just about to overflow into the filter socks section, and there are four filter socks on this system at the moment. Now, I went ahead and actually removed two of them, and I have some plugs that you guys will see in later videos. Basically, it deletes uh, two of the four socks, and then I can just go ahead and change out two socks more frequently instead of four at the same time. So it kind of saves me uh, due to my uh, gallons per hour, which is about 2,200 gallons per hour I'm putting through the main display. Uh, two filter socks I can change out every other day without any issues. They're not overflowing or anything like that. Now that might change down the road with me feeding the fish and having you know livestock in there. So if for whatever reason, if uh, two filter socks is just not enough, I can always take one of those deleted plugs out, put another filter sock in and run three or even run four. Now the water is about to overflow into the skimmer section and there is a baffle in there that dictates the water level for the skimmer section and I have it set to about eight and a half inches which this Niles Quantum 300 really likes to run at. So I'm going to go ahead and let it stay at that level and if I have to make any adjustments there are a couple screws that you can uh, lift the baffle up and down adjust the water level to what the skimmer likes. Now again you guys will see that closer in depth when we do a complete walkthrough of this sump and uh, you guys will see kind of how every aspect of this sump works. Now uh, the far right hand side as you guys see here is the refugium portion and uh, I went ahead and turned the main pump on once we got the water to the point uh, where I could actually turn it on and uh, that will pump some water into uh, the refugium here which will then drain back into the return section and go back through the entire system. Now that's going to fill up. This refugium is definitely a decent size. I would say it's approximately 20-ish gallons or so or even more than that. I really didn't do the math on the dimensions yet but it definitely holds plenty of water for the amount of macroalgae that I want to grow in this tank. All right, now that we have test filled and everything is working good, let's go ahead and move over to the aquascaping portion of this video and get some rock in this tank. All right, before we get started, I just want to give a little background on this rock for anybody who's new to the channel or this series. Now, this is 200 pounds of dry pucani, which has been curing for about three months in these 55-gallon barrels. Now, I went ahead and did a total of 400 gallons worth of water changes with this rock over the last three months, removing any nutrients, detritus, any of that stuff that uh, might cause excess nutrients uh, later on for the rock. Now, I definitely don't foresee any issues with it going into a reef tank and adding light immediately. And uh, I can tell you now, after adding the light, there was zero issues. Even though it was just T5, no LEDs at this point, um, there wasn't uh, anything. Actually, I didn't even have a diatom bloom for at least about a week or so. Uh, then I went ahead and got a small diatom bloom which a couple snails took care of within 24 hours and that's it for this rock regarding any kind of algae or excess nutrients. Now I did go ahead and make this little PVC adapter here to, that will actually connect uh, to the pumps at the bottom of the barrel so I can go ahead and pump all this water out to the backyard and then get it onto the concrete floor and start aquascaping. So this is just a quick look at that little device. Um, I probably should have made it three months earlier because it's a hell of a lot easier to get the water out of the barrel uh, doing it this way. Now, when it comes to aquascaping, I like to go ahead and put all the rock on the floor, spread it out evenly, and just have a good look over. Uh, basically, go around with a chisel, breaking up pieces that are not worth aquascaping with. Uh, if they're really big or they're just kind of awkward, I'll go ahead and chisel them, uh, making more pieces that I can actually look at and kind of decide what I want to do. Now, this time around, I'm going to go ahead and use the drill and these half-inch acrylic rods, which I will say uh, made my aquascape possible. If I didn't have these rods, uh, the aquascape wouldn't be the way it is and you guys will see here in a little bit uh, basically my whole theme is to go ahead and make sure that there's no shading for the acropora in my last build there were uh, these big SPS colonies on the top and everything underneath just suffered when it came to light now with the way that I'm gonna have this aquascaping theme there are so many different pillars and so many different um, like hands and ledges and all that kind of stuff that there's just not gonna be an option for any shading and when acropora actually start growing out over they're only gonna shade the bottom of the tank and you guys will see that here in a second once we get the t5s over the system now 
basically once I get all my pillars in the tank, I'm going to go ahead and then start gluing. Now I did do some gluing outside of the tank and with the rods and all that kind of stuff. And then once they're in there, I do all the final touches and just to make sure everything is solid. Now you guys know that I have Reggie that uh, he's about two and a half, three-ish feet, uh, that snowflake eel, and he is a beast. Like he really, uh, he really likes to mess with rocks. And you guys will see when I drop him in the system, what he does to this left rock structure as soon as he goes in there, he actually lifts the entire rock structure off the glass and bounces around trying to fit his big fat body underneath it and uh, that was just because he was stressed out or scared when I put him in there but uh, either way uh, he's doing good now and I'm just glad that everything is glued together now speaking of glue I went ahead and used about a bottle and a half of this gel super glue I picked up from bulkresupply.com now it is a 10 ounce bottle and I think it's about 25 or 30 dollars per bottle and uh, I really like this stuff I use it for all my fragging and it's much nicer than going to Home Depot and buying their individual containers or even going to the dollar store and buying all those little packs it that that just end up being a pain in the butt in the long run now it is an upfront investment but if you are doing a lot of fragging or an aquascaping job like this uh, you should definitely get the bigger bottle of super glue now I also went ahead and got a bottle of this uh, accelerator that I also use for fragging and I ended up using up the whole bottle for this project and plus uh, plus some. I actually went ahead and filled it up with salt water from my frag tank just to continue spraying. Now uh, just note that salt water doesn't set up as quickly as the uh, accelerator does but it does work. You just kind of have to hold the rock there a little bit longer. As you guys can see, it's definitely not easy to aquascape inside this 300. I was thinking about getting inside and starting to do it, but there was already a couple inches of water in the bottom, and I just didn't want to deal with that. So I went ahead and put the entire rock structures in um, individually and then added some extra pieces once they were in the tank um, just because um, I wanted to get the bulk of the aquascaping kind of together outside of the tank just to make sure that it was the way I wanted to. I didn't want to be taking rock in and out of the tank uh, very often just because I didn't want to take the chance of something slipping and breaking the glass. So uh, pretty much built everything outside, put it inside the tank, and then made some minor adjustments and added some rock to the structures uh, to get it the way I wanted to look. Once I was done aquascaping, I went ahead and let it sit for about two or three hours before adding tap water and adding the sole. Now overall, it looks pretty good. It's definitely different from what I had in the past, but I know for long term on this tank, it's going to be the best option. Of course, there's plenty of ledges for Acropora and Coral to grow, and I don't have to worry about the shading issue, as well as the bottom is very open because of the narrow bases on the rock structures, and there isn't any spots for detritus to collect. There's no dead spots in the tank at the bottom. It's going to be very easy to clean, and that's what I like. So uh, overall, it turned out pretty good. So let's go ahead and move over to what the tank looks like with T5s over it, so you guys get a better idea of how the aquascape actually came out all right well here is the aquascape with just t5 lighting now i do have four blue plus and four actinic bulbs and honestly it doesn't look that bad i will be adding leds over the next couple months and in the later video i will discuss uh, what type i went with how many and how i plan on connecting them to my apex now, as you guys can see, the rock just sits on the bottom glass. There's nothing touching the front, the sides, or the back, and that's really how I like my structures. It gives a lot of space for the tanks to swim in and around, and it really makes the tank come to life once it's full of coral. And also, the really the main reason is it's very easy to clean. There's no dead pockets or dead spots for pockets of detritus to kind of sit and break down and pollute the tank. It all gets blown around through the power heads. And uh, just to kind of give you guys a brief uh, idea of what I'm going with, I'm going to be using four Jabo WP uh, 60s, which will be connected to the Apex, and they'll run just like the 125 with different detritus modes to uh, bring that stuff up into the water column and get it down into the filter socks. Now, I will uh, go into why I went with these pumps uh, later video and kind of all the programming stuff, so stay tuned for that. But yeah, overall, guys, I am starting to uh, like the aquascaping now that it has some light over it. Uh, there's so much potential where uh, where I could put Acropora and where I can aquascape. And just um, I'm envisioning what the system's going to look like a year from now. So hopefully everything pans out. We get these LEDs over the tank soon. We can start putting some coral in it. Now, if you want to support the build, go ahead and check out my website, uh, Purchase Coral. Or you can go ahead and check out my Patreon. Either way, I appreciate all the support. If you have any questions about this setup, please let me know in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time. Peace.